Hey, just one thing, I want to thank the crowd, 11 a.m. New Year's Day. I thought we had uh, great fans today. They were engaged in the game. It really helped us in some big moments of the game. So I uh, hope everybody came to the game will come back. We're super appreciative. The students that stayed in town or came back for the game, season ticket holders showing up in full force. And then a lot of uh, maybe first-time people who took advantage of the lower bowl tickets and also thank you. Uh, for coming to the game, impacted the game. Guys were excited uh, in the locker room before the game, at halftime, and after the game, just talking about how great the crowd was. Marcus, can you talk about you know how aggressive you were getting the free throw line, especially just you know <coughs> I know Coach said getting the free throw line is important, but you guys were getting it done. Um, yeah, it's definitely something that you know it's been an emphasis since the start of the season. Um, just being more aggressive, um, getting downhill more. And, you know, it's something I've, uh, I've done throughout my career. It's just something I had to bring here. And, um, you know, coach is really stressing it through film sessions and knowing that I can do it. And, you know, just starting out conference play more to start out the right way. So I'm trying to get that done. Before the game, when did you find out that West Virginia would be shorthanded? And did that change any approach on y'all's end, or was it just a business as usual? Um, around one of the times uh, during the warm up, we went back into the locker room. That's when, uh, when we found out, so pretty close to the game. Um, we prepared like they were playing, but you know, like a lot of teams and a lot of times, you know, whenever they have you know two key players or, or a key player down, um, sometimes they come out more aggressive and you know sometimes even play better because you know other guys that you're not expecting you know will, will, will step up. And other guys like Scott Fort may start doing some different things. So um, they still came out and played their game, but you know we were ready for whoever they were going to put out there. Marcus, when you and Courtney uh, got them tied up and got, they got that shot clock violation, uh, five minutes left in the first half. Crowds on his feet, standing ovation. Does that register with you guys? 100. percent I feel like. What you know, think of that? Um, kind of like Coach said, we, we appreciated the crowd today. You know, they gave us a lot of life, a lot of energy. Um, obviously, understand that it's, it's, it's New Year's Day and it's an early game, so we appreciate the fans, every single person who came out and, and, and showed us love and, and gave us energy, and you know <coughs> they recognize our identity as well. Um, they know that you know we get after it on the defensive end, and you know those are huge plays for us. You know, some teams it might be a three, it might be a dunk. And, Obviously, that's that's still a huge place for us on the offensive end. But I think you know everybody's starting to recognize you know who we are, and, um, the team that coach put together, and, and the type of defensive line that we have. So um, it's good to see that you know they, they cheer for us when we get those kind of things because those are the kind of things that excite us. Yeah, Marcus, building on that, just they scored ten points in the final fifteen minutes of the first half. I mean, how much do y'all realize how much defense is creating for you guys right now, and how long did it take you to, the team to buy into to what Chris wanted on that end? Um, you know, whenever you're trying to be great at something, it's, you know, you can never be good enough. So, you know, coach stays on us all the time, and, you know, the rankings come out, and, you know, they say we're the number one defense, but, you know, we still see areas every single day in the film where, you know, we can improve. So, you know, we're never complacent in that department, but, like I said, we do recognize, you know, what our identity is and you know, what we're trying to do every single night, night in and night out. So. One other quick question about a specific defensive play. How do you make those free throws? I think you do you press up and get the turnover off the inbounds and a quick score. I mean, what do, what do plays like that do for a group mentally? We all can have bang, bang plays like that. Um, it's just, you know, us going out and executing. Um, coach, the staff, and all the GAs, they did a great job of scouting for us and, and putting in certain things that, you know, we wanted to execute. And that play right there was definitely something that, you know, we've been going over um, in preparation for this game. And, um, you know, we went out and executed it, and it ended up getting, getting us an easy bucket just like we planned. So, um, when stuff like that falls together, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a good feeling and, you know, all praises to the staff. Yeah, Marcus, in that first half, Courtney was really playing with a lot of force and swagger on both ends. You know, how infectious is it when he's playing like that for the rest of the guys? Uh, huge. You know, we, we're all aware of, you know, Courtney's talent and, and what he can do and what he's done in his career. So, you know, it's always coach telling us, you know, every single guy we know what we can do. Just, just go, out and be, go out there and be aggressive. Different guys, it's different nights. And, you know, tonight Courtney came out and, um, from the beginning, gave us a lot of energy, just not only, only on the offensive end, but the defensive end as well. Um, he's doing a great job on, uh, on McNeil. So, you know, party came out, gave us energy, hit shots early, and, and, and really set the tone for us. You know, to hear you guys, you know, some guys are screaming, want to know big guys. It's big for you to get off on the right foot, especially going on the road all next week. You know, what, how good did it feel just to, to have this defensive performance on, on offense in the first half and just kind of go away with the win, knowing that you're not going to be here for the next week or so? Uh, definitely feels good, confidence booster. Um, uh, like I said, we just wanted to get started off on the right foot. You know, we're a relatively new group. Um, you know, we're coming together now and we're becoming a team, but 
you know, this is our first Big 12 win together, so this is definitely huge for us. And Coach always says winning never gets old, and definitely does it. Two last ones for Marcus. Where does cohesiveness matter more? Offense, defense equal, or, or where do you guys see it? I guess the growth from when he first started this year. Um, I would say, you know, both sides matter. Um, definitely, um, you know, we're coming together. I think you can see it out there. I think, you know, you can see it from the numbers. Um, we're just, you know, it, it just took a little time. I know there's a lot of questions that people might have been concerned about that early, but we never let that affect us. We just stayed down and kept working. We knew that we were going to grind it out and figure it out together. Kurt, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus. You don't have a guy that scores 24 a night. You have like seven or eight guys that score seven to 12 a night. Is that a weakness? Is that a strength? And how do you think teams will attack y'all defensively as a um, result? I see that as a strength because, you know, we have a lot of great players and do a lot of great things. And I just see that as, you know, you, you're going to have to kind of game plan pretty widespread. You know, if you, you game plan and take away certain things, and, you know, we kind of always have options in our back pocket. So I always look at it as a strength. Um, both ends of the car, I feel like we're pretty dynamic and can do a lot of things. Thank Marcus. you, sir. Yeah. <coughs> Roger, go on. Marcus, can you just talk about your level of, there seemed to be some stuff swirling last week about your level of, you know, happiness in the program or whatever. Can you just address that? But why would you even, you know, bring that up when it's not even a credible source? Man, you go. <laughs> Great man, go enjoy your first week. Love you guys, man. Thank you, Chris, uh, I don't know if you noticed or what your reaction was when one of the loudest cheers maybe was when you got the shot clock violation that Brian mentioned. Did you notice that kind of thing? And yeah, I think these Texas happen? fans, they like to win. They like hard playing guys uh, that represent the city and the school. They like defense and stops and they like uh, scoring. They like, they like the wins. They like mimosas. Um, I think a lot of them like beer and pretzels. Um, no, we're really appreciative of our fans. They impacted the game. This is college basketball. And what's our next game? I go one at a time. We play that. Tuesday, Kansas State. And so, yeah, when we go to Manhattan, I mean, you, you guys have been there. It'll be the newspapers. It'll be sold out. It'll be nuts. So our fans did great today, and our players really enjoyed it. You know, guys, remember, like, last year, like, guys didn't play in front of any fans. So it's like, even though you got veteran players, it's kind of cool to see, like, an Andrew Jones excited about that, even though he's played in front of great crowds before. It's just been a while. So super uh, appreciative of the crowd today. Chris, what do you make of their, se they had a season high in turnovers today, of course for you. Um, do you, I mean, how, how do you look at that as a whole? Uh, are there plays that you like more than others or stretches that you like more than others? Or just that was definitely an objective of our defense to create uh, turnovers and offense, just like it is for West Virginia. Um, you know, I thought McNeil and Bridges were warriors today, both guys playing 40 minutes. And you guys understand that we were without one of our best players too. Chase Febris didn't play in the game today, expecting to be back by the next game. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of next next guy up. And so um, I thought today those two guys were warriors, you know, playing like 40 minutes a piece. Um, I thought, I don't want to speak for McNeil, but I thought hopefully we made it hard for him to get his points. And then we didn't do a great job on Bridges, just some mental lapses. A lot of that's on uh, everybody, including myself. Um, and I think with our turnovers, we, we turn them over, what, 20 times or so, and they turn us over 12, but they also block nine shots today. So a block shot's kind of like a turnover. So I thought both defenses manufactured the, uh, the, the the next possessions that we're both looking for. I think from where I was sitting, I think we did a little bit better job scoring off of our turnovers for us. Chris, the, Dylan okay? It looked like he kind of tweaked something in the first half when he dove into the – yeah, yeah, Warren told me uh, at halftime, uh, I don't know what the word is, mild enough that his ankle just a little bit, but he was full uh, full go in the second half. And then second, just that stretch of the final 15 minutes of the first half, giving up just 10 points. Uh, maybe your biggest reaction was on the five-second call and out-of-bounds play. I mean, how how much did everybody feed off what was going on that first half? Well, I thought on that one, you know, players make plays. You know, I, it, it's never going to be me out there getting a rebound or, throwing an assist pass, but uh, so it's just always uh, exciting. You know, Timmy Allen puts a lot of time in his preparation. He's a, he's a pro, and I think he saw something there. So that was a press where, you know, Timmy has the option to be on the ball or off the ball. And it's just really cool to see a player, you know, when that, all that work in the film room and all his preparation plays off in a big play. And then, of course, when his teammates are excited, and that's what it's all about. You know, when guys celebrate other people's plays, now you're becoming a team. And uh, last time I checked, you know, you got to be a team to win in college basketball. Yeah, Chris, uh, Christian Bishop has six offensive rebounds in 19 minutes. 
know, what kind of X factor can he be for y'all? You know, what kind of impact did he have today? And what kind of impact can he have going forward for y'all? Yeah, CB played great. You know, I told him that uh, the last time he came out of the game. You know, I thought there was portions of the game where he was the best player on the floor. Uh, he was anchoring our defense and uh, his ability to offensive rebound tonight calmed us down in some big moments. Um, so obviously, you know, we put ourselves in a position today to win the game by based on how we played in the first half. In the second half, we got to come out and play. You know, that's a growing curve. But I thought at times we played well in the second half too. Uh, but CB was big today. He made a lot of great individual plays. What do you, what do you think the next step for, for Devin is in his game? Just stay the course, uh, run his own race, uh, eliminate you know um, outside voices, and just uh, play. Man, he's a talented young guy. Uh, you know, listen to his family, uh, listen to his coaches, and uh, just just keep going. Devin did some good things today. Uh, he's a good player, you know, talented guy. Just got to run his own race, you know. And, um, that's the deal. Process over to date. You know, like what we're doing right now versus where can this thing go? Um, but we, we have a plan for him right now. We, we need Devin to have a great season for us to compete in this league. And today he, he played great coming off the bench. Uh, gave us some great guard minutes. And his role will only expand uh, as he continues to produce. Is, is he one of those players who you know, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't shoot very often, but he can do and affect the game in his own way and have a big in, impact even when he's not scoring points? Well, Devin's a freshman playing on a top 25 team in college basketball with seven or eight veteran players. He's the same backcourt as Courtney Ramey and Marcus Carr, and um, he's in the rotation. I mean, the young guy's right there, and uh, he's a really good defensive player, and offensively, I mean, he can play. He's just trying to get ball moving right now, but I mean, Dev's in the gym all day, every day. Um, I don't know what car he drives, but I'll tell you next time, when you guys are driving down 35, looking at parking lot, he's here, man. He's here, he makes over 300 threes a day, he can shoot the ball, it's just a matter of, you know, being on the team, and everybody's trying to kind of find their role still. But Dev, uh, Dev's a part of it. And you guys saw today we have uh, possessions where Devin's in there with Marcus and Ramey because the ball handling, breaking the press. Uh, we, we know Devin can guard four possessions. He's a tough, strong guy. So uh, if he runs his own race, he's going to be special. Chris, overall, is this the kind of performance that you can point to and say, guys, we do this, you can win this conference? For sure. Well, that's an 18-round fight, you know, and so I don't even think you talk about anything until you make the turn, man. And so you got nine games, and you're just trying to get not too, too high or too low, try to play your best and see what happens. And I think around the turn, you take a peek and see kind of what the deal is. And, you know, if you're going to win the conference, it always happens in the last two weeks. So um, we don't talk much about, you know, winning uh, – in our locker room, we talk about process. Let's win today. And so, so I, after the game, enjoy the game, hydrate, rest, training room, spend some time, release, uh, balance, get a good night's rest tonight, come back in here tomorrow and see where we're at. Chris, you don't have a Jerk Culver like you did at Tech when you look at the Final Four, it's going to score 20 at night. Are you comfortable with your offense and the way you can rely on different people on different nights? Yeah, we got really good players here. Uh, you know, um, Jarrett was fun to coach, but we didn't have a Marcus Carr or a Ramey or a Jones or a Trey or Dylan or CB or Devin or Timmy or, you know, and so, yeah, these, these guys are uh, really, really good players. You know, we've got some NBA players in that locker room, I believe. I got no problem saying that. Mm -hmm. um, every team's set up a little bit different. I mean, you guys followed that team from afar, but it was, uh, Jarrett was a great player. But it, it wasn't just Jarrett, you know, Matt Morrow, or Norris, and Tariq, and Brandon. A lot of these guys played. So this is no different. Like, um, you know, this is a team. So tonight, obviously, the Jones, Ramey, and Carr offensively. Uh, next game, it could be Trey, Dillon, and CB. You know, we just got to take what the defense gives us. We got to stay committed to, to defending. We got to stay together. Uh, great locker room today. I mean, the guys that didn't have the stats are jumping up and down, hugging the guys that did. So. If we continue going this way, uh, we'll be a good team. We'll yeah. have a chance. Is it harder for defenses? Like, who do you take out? Do you, who do you concentrate on if you're out of defense? Yeah, I think so. Uh, no doubt about it. When we prepare, um, we always try to figure out what the other team's identity is and game plan for it. When you're sitting there and there's you know, six or seven guys you got to worry about. I mean, this team's a great example. You know, we, uh, with Taz and Bridges and uh, McNeil. Uh, but those the second tier guys, I mean, they got really good players in this team, uh, West Virginia. So every team in the Big 12 is like that. You know, you, 
you got at least four or five guys you got a game plan for. How many times do you, do you want to be at the free throw line per game? Yeah. It kind of depends on the pace of the game, how many shots you're taking, how many possessions. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's a good one. You know, I think Coach and I have always talked about, you know, trying to shoot more than the other team. Made, no, that's not it. Make more. We want to make more than the other team shoots. I know that guy's just <laughs> thinking about my mimosa. But, uh, <laughs> Brian, do you have a mimosa? I have a nice follow-up. <laughs> uh, Brian, I go way back. Um, what was the question, man? ADD kicking in. Well, you had uh, what Allen Jones and and uh, Carr go 12 to 13 from the foul line in the second half, and you finished 15 to 16. Is that about what? Are you good with that? Are you happy with that? It's a balance, right? So trying to make more of the team shoots, uh, trying to shoot a percentage individually in the team, challenge the guys each offseason to increase their percentage. Uh, even when you got a great 92% shooter, you're saying, hey, can you get the 95 this year? So we spent time with our guys showing the percentages last year where we're trying to get. We have a free throw club, a lot of things we talk about. Guys have routines. Um, in terms of the game, you know, I've coached other teams where we're just going to, you know, we're going to try to get to that free throw line, period. But this team's got, you know, shooters. If Jones is open for three, you know, I, I don't, you know, that's that's better than a free throw sometimes. So it's that balance kind of depends on the team you play. But we got to get to the free throw line. Last game, who we play? And Carter Ward. Yeah, you know, we just didn't get there at all, right? And so that was disappointing. So we made an info, uh, a decision to try to get the free throw line. Did a little bit better. Chris, how much of the, the, the spacing is correct? When the spacing is correct and the bigs are looking for that extra pass, it, it looks wonderful. But there's a couple times where either the passing is off or the moment's off. I mean, is, it, is that just a work in progress of those three in the paint passing around? Yeah, but, you know, eventually the work in the progress line, you know, you, you won't fall for that, you know. So uh, <laughs> I'd say this, you know, West Virginia does a great job disrupting your offense, whether it's traps or scrambles or what have you. So spacing uh, was too. A lot of times we're trying to run something, but they choose to go trap or something. So now what we're trying to do is over. we got to make a play. I thought we did a great job of that in the first half in moments. That's why we had some layups also. What's going on out here? Getting layups in the Division One game. Um, in the second half, I think trying to protect the lead and play with the lead, uh, you know, I, I didn't think we cut well. We had a couple of just kind of stale possessions. Uh, I think that's on me more than anybody. Uh, and I told the guys that we, we got to get that cleaned up. And good problem to have, though. So next time we're up 20 in a Big 12 game, maybe we can be better. But I, I'll take that any day of the week. You know, It doesn't happen a lot. Bob, last one. How much has Marcus grown into the role you want him to, to play for you? How much are you seeing the development of what you want specifically from him? I don't think Marcus is having to grow into a role. He's a real pro. He just, uh, I mean, Marcus is a guy, that, you know, he wants to win, cares about his craft. He's a great teammate. He's a good communicator. Um, you can have two way conversations with him, not just one way. Um, so to say he's grown into a role, I wouldn't think it's accurate because he came here and we had a vision for what. He needed to do, and uh, he's been great. So, um, you know, Marcus is—he's a special guy, and um, him and I got a chance to spend a little bit of time together around the Christmas break because uh, he wasn't able to go home. And, um, you know, I stayed here, and so just uh, yeah, we, we spent a lot of time together as do with, with all of our players. Uh, Marcus and Ramy and Deb being kind of the point guard type guys of this team. You know, those relationships have to be strong when they are.